Hi guys, and welcome to today's video. I think I probably should just address the elephant in the room, which is I have a new setup. I completely rearranged this room this weekend and I just felt like I didn't really enjoy how everything was set up in here. It was feeling very cluttered and I didn't like how my filming setup was playing with my day-to-day -day makeup setup. I'm really liking how everything is set up. I will probably have to mess around with the lighting a little bit, just getting used to kind of this new corner of the room and the light source from the window changing, which is over here to my right. So hopefully this is working out, but you have tuned in today because you are interested in Charlotte Tilbury's makeup. Up. So I did a couple things. So I looked at everything that I owned and I have ranked them from my most favorite to my least favorite. But I thought that ranking methodology might be a fun way to kind of convey my Charlotte Tilbury makeup and my experiences with her brand. I do have to say my experiences with her brand are largely positive. Um, I have really enjoyed a lot of the products I've tried. So even products that are down at the very bottom of this list with one exception, maybe two exceptions, I think are fantastic products and would rank higher than a lot of other products in my collection. So just because I have ranked something number 12 out of 13 or 11 out of 13 doesn't mean that it is a bad product. Far from it. Some of the things even towards the bottom of my list are things that I reach for over a lot of other things in my collection. So I got done with the ranking process, which because I've got 13 products, we're going to go from 13 to one. And I thought to myself, you know what? Not everybody is going to want to spend the money or spent up for Charlotte Tilbury. So let me see if I can recommend a dupe or something similar. And in many cases, I don't necessarily think some of these products are 100% dupes in terms of formula and color. Sometimes it's just a formula dupe. Sometimes it's a color dupe. A couple times I've been able to find what I would consider to be both, but I thought it would be a good exercise for me to kind of recommend from things in my collection. If you don't want to buy this, here's something that might work instead. So I have kind of layered that into this video as well. Hopefully it's not the longest video of life, but I definitely wanted to appeal to people who are playing around with some luxury makeup, but also offer up some suggestions if paying 30 some dollars for a lipstick just makes your eyes bug out totally understand. So that is the plan for today's video. We're going to go one by one, ranking 13 to one, and then I'm going to offer up my dupes um, as we go. I should also mention that I am wearing nothing but Charlotte Tilbury on my face today, and I recorded myself filming these so you can kind of see how these products go on my face. That being said, the first product I have is actually one I can't show you. It is one that has been decluttered. So number 13 on my list is her Hollywood Lips Matte Liquid Lipstick. I didn't care for this formula. I got it in a Beautylish Lucky Bag, uh, not this December, but the December before that, and I didn't care for it. It was a very uh, moussey, thick texture, which I can get around. I can get over a moussey texture. Um, I think the Ofra liquid lipsticks, for example, are a little more moussey, and I have no issue with those. My issues with hers is that it went on incredibly patchy. It settled into lip lines, and then it was flaky. Like it would start to almost crumble off my lips, even with a thin layer. So once again, I don't know if maybe I just got an older product based on the things I've read online. I think that formula is just one that, it's just not great, to be totally honest. It's just not great. Moving on to number 12. I would put her eyeshadow quads in this category. So I do have two of them. I have Pillow Talk, which is mostly what I'm wearing on my eyes today. And I think it's a good palette. I just don't think it's great. Um, her mattes blend, they're buildable. They're not hard to work with. The shimmer shades in here are a sort of a satin texture, at least in this one. And she does have these things that she calls a transforming shade. These are more of a thin, um, almost like chroma crystal topper. That's the closest thing I've felt to this is the Natasha Denona Chroma Crystal Top Coats. Um, you really have to do those with your finger and it's best if you put them over top of a shadow you've already laid down on top of your eyes. If you just put this over your eyes themselves, it's such a sheer wash of color that it just looks slightly glossy, which listen, that may appeal to you. I definitely think the sort of glossy shade that she includes in all of her quads is unique, um, but I don't feel like it is so mind blowing that it makes this quad elevated in my mind. These are $53. I don't think they're worth $53. I think they're fine, but they're not like amazing slash remarkable. So I have Pillow Talk. Like I said, I think my eye makeup looks nice today. I don't have anything bad to say about this quad. I just don't think that it is remarkable in that sense. 
And then the other quad that I have is the Dolce Vita palette, which is a little bit darker, a little bit smokier. In this palette, you actually just have three of her satin formulas and then one of this sort of transforming shade here in the corner. I do find that I can do really pretty single shadow looks with the one of these two all over my lid and sort of buffed out. Um, and then you've got a really pretty pearl shade to pop in your inner corner, your brow bone. And then you can use this transformer shade over the top of either one of those to give a little bit more gloss or a little glossy effect to the center of the lid. So once again, I don't have a bad experience with her quads. They just didn't blow me away. And for a brand that has so many products that I have just fallen in love with for various reasons, I expected to have more of an affinity towards these shadows, more of a, oh gosh, I can't wait to use these shadows the way that I do with some of her other products. And I just, I just didn't. I think they're fine. So I actually don't have a dupe for these quads. One, because I feel like you can replicate good satin and matte shades in a lot of palettes now. I would look towards the e.l.f. shadows or the Milani shadows. And then this transformer shade on the bottom just really doesn't have a drugstore counterpart at this point. I mean, we're seeing a little bit more of these very thin um, sort of topper eyeshadows in the Chroma Crystals from Natasha Denona and the Hourglass, um, what are those? The veil eyes, I think is what they're called. Both of those have that very thin formula that's meant to be sort of tapped over shadows underneath. I have yet to see the drugstore dupe that yet. Um, if you are aware of a dupe, let us know down in the comments below, but it's something I've been watching for because I think it's a really fun product concept and I think the drugstore could dupe it. So now we've moved on to number 11 and I really should call out that those two products aside, one that was average and one that was definitely below average is kind of a fail for me. Um, outside of those two products in 13 and 12 spot, 11 on are all products that I really, really love. Number 11. It is the Kissing Formula Lipstick from Charlotte Tilbury. Now she has three sort of lipstick collections. One is the Kissing Lipsticks. These are all of a cream formula and they have a traditional sort of bulleted lipstick form to them. She also has a Matte Revolution lipstick, which is in a squared off bullet. We'll talk about those here in a little bit. And then she has something called her Hot Lips Lipsticks. And so these are celebrity inspired. I would say, I think she's got like 10 of them. Um, all but one of them are the same formula as the Matte Revolution. There is one in there that is a cream formula, but I don't necessarily feel like with that Hot Lips collection, we found a new formula. She really has two. It's either her cream formula in her Kissing Lipstick or her Matte Revolution lipstick. I enjoy this lipstick. I am wearing the shade Bitch Perfect. I think it is a really pretty sort of pinky, light pinky nude. It's really flattering on my skin tone. The formula of this lipstick is super creamy and comfortable. Don't get me wrong, the packaging on this is absolutely stunning. All of her lipsticks come in this rose gold metal packaging that looks very vintage and is absolutely stunning. So I have nothing, no complaints about this lipstick other than I think that this is not a remarkable formula. And I, although I love this color and I love the feeling of this lipstick and I love the style of this lipstick. I don't necessarily feel that it is like 100% remarkable out there in a sea of cream lipsticks that I do really enjoy. In fact, one that I would say is very comparable in terms of formula, if not exact color to the one I'm wearing today, is from Flower Beauty. Their cream lipstick formula feels very comparable to the Kissing Cream Lipstick Formula from Charlotte Tilbury. The closest shade match I had was Peachy Nude, which, listen, it's very close, but you can see the undertone is just a little different. Peachy Nude is more peachy, and and then Bitch Perfect is a little bit more neutral, a little less uh, peachy pink. So I do find that it is a little bit more wearable with lots of different eye makeup looks than that very strongly peachy one from Flower. But the formula is super, super comparable and I would highly recommend, as you guys have heard me talk about, probably to the point you are sick of it, um, the Flower lipstick line is absolutely amazing. In the number 10 spot, I have put her Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Shadow Pots. So this is a very interesting formula. It's very different than any other sort of potted cream eyeshadow that I've used. In fact, I, I hesitate to even call it a cream. Um, it's not your typical sort of MAC paint pot true cream formula. This is a little bit of a lighter, almost more whipped texture. It's definitely different than any other eyeshadow formula I have ever used. 
It's not a jelly like we're seeing coming out from so many brands right now, but neither is it a fully set cream like a MAC paint pot. So I really do enjoy the texture on these. I have two colors. I have Marie Antoinette, which is this little bit more of a cool toned uh, bronzy taupe. And then I have Betty, which is more of your traditional bronze color. These are shadows that I really love doing on days where I just don't want to think about a ton of makeup. And so I will plop these on my eyes and just wear this and put it a little bit more heavy concentration on my lid and then blend it up and out with a brush. These last all day. I don't have any issues with creasing. They give a really nice sort of, I say metallic, but it's not like a foiled metallic. It's more of a traditional metallic shift to them, but they also, when you diffuse them, blend out and turn almost more into a satin texture. These are great as bases for other eyeshadows as well. And once it's set, it's set. I feel like it's locked into place. And these are ones that I have traditionally reached for quite a lot, these two shades in particular, um, when I'm traveling and I know I'm going to be outside running around or you know, we went down to Orlando and we went to the some theme parks down there and I wanted sort of light makeup when I went running around, but things that I knew I was going to last all day in different weather conditions. And this is the one that I put on my eyes and it lasted all day, it looked absolutely beautiful after walking around a park for, you know, 10 hours a day. The only reason these are lower down on my list is that I don't reach for them all of the time. I don't feel like they are essential layering piece when I'm doing a powder shadow look. I don't feel like this is a product I'm reaching for in order to build out an eye look. They are pretty underneath things and layering other shadows on top, but I'm pretty much reaching for these when I want that easy makeup day and I don't um, want my eye makeup to crease. In general, I'm probably playing around with powder shadows more than I am a lot of these cream shadows. In terms of dupes, I definitely do not have a formula dupe. In fact, I can't even think of a high-end formula dupe, let alone a drugstore formula dupe. So I did prowl through things to try and see if I had any color dupes or anything that I might recommend. I don't have one for Betty, which is that more warm tone bronze look. But if you're interested in the more cool tone shade Marie Antoinette, I do have a color dupe that is really, really, really similar, and that is from e.l.f. It is their smudge pot in Cruisin Chic. This is a very, very, very similar color to Marie Antoinette. Um, in fact, I feel like they um, are very, very comparable once you get them built up on the eyes. This is your traditional cream paint pot though. It definitely is um, a uh, easy formula to work with, but it doesn't have that sort of light whipped texture the way that the Charlotte Tilbury ones do. Um, they're easy to work with, both of them are. I find the Charlotte Tilbury is a little easier to sort of spread around the eyes. I can dip my little brush into the uh, Charlotte Tilbury once and have enough to go all over my lid, whereas this I'm kind of probably dipping back in two or three times to kind of build that up but it is a lovely, lovely color. These also set down and I have zero issue with them transferring as well. So I do think this is a good drugstore alternative if this sort of one and done shadow look in a cream format that lasts all day appeals to you. In the number nine spot are her Cheek to Chic Swish and Glow blushers. I have two shades. I have the shade Love Glow, um, which has a sort of peachy pink with a little bit of a gold shift on the outside, and then a lighter sort of pinkier tone in the middle there. And then I also have her newest shade, which is Pillow Talk. And this shade has a sort of a deeper, more neutral mauve tone on the outside, and then a much lighter sort of almost highlighty type peach shade in the middle. Um, I do like this formula quite a bit. It is satin, so it is not intensely glowy, but it also gives a lovely flush to the cheek that I quite frankly prefer over a matte blush. I mean, I will use matte blushes, but I definitely think that my blush love is a satin, just a little bit of a glow. I don't want it to look like I put highlighter on my cheeks, but I love that glow that you get from that. I am wearing the Pillow Talk shade today. And so the premise behind her blushes is that you swirl your brush around the outside and you place that sort of back here on your cheek. 
And then you take your brush and more pop it in the middle and that goes on the apples of your cheek to sort of brighten them up. And so you're getting sort of a multi-dimensional blush glow from that. I actually do like that effect quite a bit. I do think it's very flattering, that sort of application technique. And these are the things that you can tell that you have a makeup artist behind the scenes building products because she's thinking about a technique that she knows works on all of her clients and that sort of two color blush application and thinking, I can do that in a single product. I think they're absolutely beautiful. I do think you can replicate the style of these at the drugstore. And so while I think the formula on these is gorgeous, it lasts all day, I love how it blends out, it's never patchy or chalky or weird. I mean, it's a lovely formula, absolutely gorgeous. And I feel very luxurious holding and using these products. I definitely feel like I have a drugstore formula that gives me a very similar look. Now, it doesn't have a large shade range so I do feel like that is where the Charlotte Tilbury one really does shine. It's got, they have quite a few different colors, but I have to say from a formula perspective and as far as how it looks on my cheeks, these Catrice strobing blushes, I talked about these last year in my spring drugstore roundup series. These came very, very high at the top of my list and for good reason. It gives a very similar satin effect to my skin. Um, it's got four little quadrants in here that kind of go light to dark. So you can definitely do the same thing you could do with the Charlotte Tilbury, concentrate your brush more on this end for the back half of your face, and then move over to this side to kind of brighten it. The formula on both of these is going to give you that same satin effect and that same ability to do sort of that two-toned uh, blush application. In the number eight spot is a powder. So this is the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I have the shade Fair. Um, it is an absolutely gorgeous compact. Once again, all of her packaging is just stunning in my book. This powder is actually really nice. Um, I know it's been very hyped up on YouTube and I don't think it is my favorite powder in my collection, but I actually do think it is a very versatile powder. I do think this works actually fairly well to set underneath my eyes. Uh, there is some talc in here and we'll talk about the ingredients here in just a second, but I do feel like the addition of the other sort of skin softening and emollient type powders in here does a lot to keep this from drying out my under eyes. I put this underneath my eyes as well as to kind of do a light dusting all over my face today. Um, I definitely think this is a very versatile product in the sense that I do feel like I can use it both on my face and under my eyes. I just use a light hand. I have found that if I go in with too much of this powder, I can look really cakey really quickly. So I tend to use a fluffier sort of brush Unfortunately, this is a brush that is discontinued. It's from Sonia Kashik. So if you can find a similar shape to this, it's super floppy, um, doesn't have a whole lot of density to it. And so what I will do is just kind of tap my brush into here a couple of times tap off the excess and then lightly sort of dust this around my face to set my makeup. So I do feel like this is a very nice powder when applied that way, but I have used it with a more dense powder brush and I really haven't liked how heavy my makeup started to look. So light hand, gorgeous, heavier hand, I don't necessarily care for it. So it's a lovely powder and I absolutely love how my skin looks when I apply it using the methods I talked today. Fluffy brush underneath my eyes, that larger floppy brush for the rest of my face. And I, I absolutely love it. And I do love that I can travel with this and this can be my only powder for my face and my under eyes. So I don't have to worry about taking multiple products. It does have this really nice, finely milled smoothness to it. Um, and I think that's in large part due to some key ingredients she's pulled into this powder. But I do have a drugstore product that I think gives a very similar effect if I'm being honest. So this is from e.l.f. This is their Beautifully Bare Sheer Tint Finishing Powder. This actually comes in five shades. I should also say Charlotte's comes in eight. And given this is a finishing powder and you're not meant to really add coverage, I think having a smaller range of colors is totally fine for something like this. You're not adding coverage from this product. You're just setting your face. Um, Elf just chose to go for five of them. Um, so it does come in this really pretty packaging. Um, I think it's the beautifully bare line that Elf did is probably one of the nicer ones they've done. It is plastic, but it's got a nice heaviness to it. In this case, you do have a mirror at the top and then underneath there's actually a sponge you can use. This powder also has a real similar creaminess and smoothness to it. And I find that I can get a very similar effect uh, using this lightly under my eyes and lightly all over my face. These are not dupes in terms of ingredients. So I did wanna show you the ingredients here. 
there's not a ton of duplication throughout the entire list of ingredients. I'm not shocked by that, but what I see in the Charlotte Tilbury powder is that you have talc uh, and mica, and then you got something called polymethyl methacrylate. I think I'm saying that correctly. That's an ingredient I researched that is a bit newer to the market in terms of chemistry and formulating uh, products for the beauty industry. And it has a really nice, strong emolliency to it. And it feels very creamy to the touch. And so it adds a lot of skin softening emollient type textures to products. So that is definitely something you are feeling in this product, I think from the um, talc and then a little bit from that, uh, a little bit from mica, but the addition of that polymethyl ingredient as well as dimethicone and then silica, which has a really nice slip to it, is definitely what's giving that Charlotte Tilbury its lovely, lovely texture. On the e.l.f. side, you are getting that texture from talc, same as Charlotte Tilbury, silica, same as Charlotte Tilbury, and then dimethicone. So you're, you don't have that more expensive, newer formulated ingredient, but the addition of those first three ingredients are what's giving that real nice creaminess and smoothness that feels very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury. They're both using a similar ingredient that's also gonna add some additional emolliency. In the Charlotte Tilbury product, it's the zinc stearate, and then in the e.l.f. product, it's the magnesium stearate. And then you're also seeing a starch type ingredient in here, which is, I don't wanna call call it filler because listen, every ingredient has a purpose. You don't just add an ingredient for no purpose at all, but this starch, but starch type ingredients are going to be what gives a little bit of um, additional substance to these powder products and helps to set things down. So in the e.l.f. side, you've got a starch ingredient from aluminum start, oxy something or other. And then on the Charlotte Tilbury side, you've got the Z Mays cornstarch side. And if I'm being very honest, Z Mays cornstarch can be a little drying on my skin. And so I do feel like that's why if I go a little ham with the Charlotte Tilbury one, it can look a little heavy um, and a little cakey on me. Um, but the same thing happens on the e.l.f. one if I go a little too ham. And once again, I think it's just because there is that, uh, they both have talc and they both have a starch-based ingredient in the powder as well. But I do feel like they've got nice emollient type uh, additional ingredients and uh, skin softening powders in here that are also making these powders feel very luxurious and silky. So if you've been curious about the Charlotte Tilbury one and just don't want to spend the money, give this elf one a try and see how you feel about it because I do think they feel and look super similar on the skin. In the number seven spot is her uh, Beauty Light Wand Easy Highlighter. So this has sort of a squeezy tube type packaging. And then in the top, you have a sort of sponge applicator, which actually has the ability to kind of twist to toggle open or closed, which makes it great for travel, especially on an airplane where cabin pressure can mess with squeezy tubes quite a bit. I liked the fact that I could twist this shut and no product get it out of the base and into the top here. This is a nice product. Um, the color is really pretty. It's peachy neutral, not super gold. It's more of a peachy champagne color. It's an interesting cream texture. So it's a little more reminiscent of a Becca um, shimmering skin perfector in my mind in terms of it being a little bit more uh, thicker and a little creamier. So I've just given away what I think one of the dupes is here, um, but I do think it's thicker and creamier, kind of like those skin perfectors. So I do think that it is dupable in terms of a cheaper product, especially in terms of price per ounce. Granted, that is not a drugstore product, but I did want to call out the formula of those two felt very comparable to me. Now, I know some people don't care for these spongy applicators on the tops of makeup products, it's never bothered me, but I do think that it, the ultimate glow it gives you is super natural, blends into your skin. It just makes your skin look glowy versus I've got highlighter on my face. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I feel like that's a fairly intense glow, but it's also really natural on my skin. Like because it's that cream product, it just really just sinks into the skin. I feel like this is a product that's also gonna work really well if you've got any sort of texture. Um, anytime I've had any sort of breakouts or anything that have popped up on my face and I've used this product, it's just glided over the top of them. It hasn't emphasized any of the texture on my skin. So I think that's an absolutely lovely product. If you are looking for a drugstore dupe that is creamy like that, I will tell you, 
I don't know of one. So I feel like at this point, at least that is cruelty free. Um, I feel like a lot of the cruelty free brands either have stick highlighters or they have a liquid highlighter that is much, much thinner and a lot more metallic. This one is sort of creamy and a little bit more natural. So don't necessarily have a dupe in terms of a cream product like that. Um, I will say the Becca I think is fairly comparable but in terms of a product that I think is going to give a similar effect to the skin, I would personally recommend one of the ColourPop um, Super Shock Cheek Highlighters, in particular the shade Lynch Money, because it doesn't have any micro shimmer in it, doesn't have any shifting. I feel like you can get a very similar replicated look from the shade Lynch Money that you can from the Hollywood Fil Flawless Filter. So it's definitely not a 100% dupe, um, but it is the closest thing I've got in my collection that's going to give you a very soft natural highlight from either a cream or a liquid product. In the number six spot is the Matte Revolution lipsticks. It's in the same packaging as the Kissing lipstick, but this one has a sort of squared off tip shape, which I actually find is lovely for applying. That sort of squared off tip I think makes it really easy to get a nice crisp line, especially with some of the brighter colors. I didn't try on every single lipstick in this video. I did try on the shade Very Victoria, which is what I'm holding up here so you can kind of see how the formula applies. What makes this formula very unique is that it's got a very, it's a very thin matte formula. I feel like a lot of matte traditional bulleted lipsticks have a very thick consistency to them. They can tug a little bit when they go on, or even if they don't tug, there's some thickness to them. This formula has very thin feeling. It just glides across your lips. So it's very easy to get full opacity with a formula like this, but it's also very easy to just do a very light um, swash of color, blend it out with your finger and get more of that sort of powder kiss formula that's gotten very popular lately, that very popsicle lip look. Um, you can easily do that with this formula. And so I think this formula is very, very beautiful. In terms of formulas that are comparable to this, the closest I can offer up is from Kiko Milano. So this is not super easy to get here in the United States. This is their Velvet Passion lipstick. I will say their packaging on this is, it feels super high end. Like this feels like a luxury lipstick container. It is metal packaging. It's got this really um, awesome sort of magnetic closure. Um, and then this formula in and of itself feels very, very comparable to what Charlotte has done with that thin sort of easy glide on matte finish. So this is probably the closest match that I've found at the drugstore in terms of formula. The other one that is similar, but I would say is a little bit more pigmented and slightly more creamy um, is the CoverGirl Demi Matte Exhibitionist Lipsticks. These are close. Um, they, there's a bit more creaminess and a little more thickness to them than the Charlotte Tilbury ones, but I do feel like it has a very similar sort of thin slide to them that is a little bit more unique on the marketplace. And I do really enjoy these um, from CoverGirl. I really wish they would expand the shade range because I think that is the biggest thing that's lacking in this Demi Matte formula uh, from CoverGirl. It's just they don't have a ton of colors, but I do think that these are fairly similar in terms of formula. All right, so we've made it to my top five products. So in the number five spot are her lip cheats. I have four different colors that I really, really enjoy. This is a traditional pencil formula, so you do need to sharpen it. So that may or may not be your cup of tea. I personally find that because these are in a pencil format, the bottom part of this is more protected than the sort of twist up retractable pencils. So I know it can be a bit of a pain to sharpen these and to um, maybe have one in your purse and it's no longer sharpened and you don't have a way to get it. I get why retractable liners are so popular, but in order for those retractable liners not to dry out as much because there's air around them uh, inside of that plastic container, they have to add a little bit more emolliency to them. So they tend to be a little creamier, a little slippier, and that may be great for you, especially if you like filling in your whole lips with a lip liner. I find that sometimes they can go too far and then it just feels like I've got a super finely tipped uh, cream lipstick in a lip liner format and it's not really doing what I want a lip liner to do, which is last a really long time um, and or keep lipstick from straying outside lip lines. When you move into a more traditional wood pencil type, or I would even put into a plastic pencil base, what you get is something that is not quite as 
um, slippy feeling. Um, these definitely do glide on. Don't get me wrong, there's no tugging or pulling. It's not a dry formula, but because it's a little bit drier and less emollient than those others, I find that these last on my lips a lot longer than retractable lip pencils. I also find that these um, lock in lipsticks. So if I'm wearing a bright red lipstick, for example, and I pull in the red shade that I have from her, um, this really does help any red lipsticks that I put on to kind of stay in place and not wander around on my face. So I really enjoy her formula here. I think it's really, really pretty. I'm kind of bummed that we've gotten away from more traditional wooden type pencils because I just tend to prefer the formulas in these a little bit more. Don't get me wrong. There's beautiful formulas at the drugstore that are retractable and that I absolutely love. But I will say traditional wood pencils just have a special place in my heart. In terms of a potential dupe, the closest thing I've found is also from Kiko Milano. I do feel like Kiko is looking very closely at Charlotte Tilbury sometimes and making some um, products that are very similar. So this is a wooden touch pencil. It actually has very similar packaging to Charlotte Tilbury. I just have one shade. Um, this is this is shade 304. But in terms of formula, gosh guys, it feels really freaking similar. I have not tried any other than this um, in terms of this lip liner, but it does make me want to try a few others. Next time there's a sale, Kiko frequently does 30% off site-wide. So if you've been curious about either this lip liner that I'm recommending or the Velvet passion um, lipstick, I would say wait until you see one of those 30% off sales because they come every other month, if not every month at some point um, on their website. In the number four spot is her concealer. So this is the Magic Away Liquid Concealer. I have the shade too fair. Um, I will say there's a shade one that's even lighter, but I decided to get one that I thought was a little bit closer to my skin tone. Um, the one shade was definitely significantly lighter, and I've just kind of realized that I don't really like a light white under eye. I want it maybe a half a shade to a shade lighter than the rest of my base makeup, um, and that makes this the perfect shade for me. All that to say, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous concealer. A little bit thicker and creamier, so it's not a very thin formula. It does have a sponge tip applicator, which I actually think allows me to get a nice thin amount of a creamier formula on my eyes. I feel like if there had been a doe foot wand in this one, it would have been a little bit harder to apply. Um, and to be honest, I actually don't have any issues with this sponge tip. Once again, I think it just applies the style of product incredibly well. It's beautiful, beautiful packaging. So it's that same metallic uh, metal packaging that you see on her lipsticks. It's gorgeous. And although there is maybe not a absolute crap ton of product in here, I also feel like I'm not using a ton of it. I think it gives good high medium coverage. It's not 100% full coverage, although I guess if I applied more, it probably would be full coverage. It doesn't really crease on me. And I don't say that very often. I do have some fine lines underneath my eyes. I think most people do, even people in their 20s. It's just part of that area of our face because our eyes are moving on a regular basis. We get little fine lines under there. But what I find is if I put this on, I blend it out with a sponge, Oftentimes when I come back to powder my concealer, I'm kind of having to use my finger to kind of tap out um, any that's settled into those fine lines. I don't find that any have settled into the fine lines in between me kind of applying this and then reaching for some powder. And that is not a long period of time. We're talking, you know, 15, 20 seconds, but most concealers on me will have settled into fine lines. This doesn't, it just really glides over the top of the skin. Um, and I think it just gives a really nice smoothing effect and then set it with a little bit of powder and you are good to go. I don't find this to be super drying. I don't find this to crumble or get weird on me by the end of the day. So it's a gorgeous concealer. Now I will say something that is comparable at the drugstore is actually from the Ulta Beauty line. So this is their full coverage liquid concealer. It is that same thicker, creamier formula. Um, you can definitely get way too much out on this wand. And so this is why I say I kind of prefer this more fluffy style uh, that she's done on here because I think the formula in here is actually very similar. It's more creamy and mousse-like. And so what I end up doing is having to wipe this wand off and then kind of position it and blend it out or add it to here and then blend it with my finger and then blend it with my sponge to get a similar effect. Honestly, if you put this 
concealer though inside of this packaging. I don't know if I would be able to tell the difference. It really is just the application process is a little trickier with the wand style application, in my opinion. It's not insurmountable, guys. It's just that I find thicker formulas like this oftentimes work better uh, with a sponge type applicator versus uh, a wand. I feel like you can just end up with way too much product with a wand. And that's the one thing I've had to watch out for with this is just applying too much. But in terms of a formula that is giving me, I think, high medium coverage when I blend it out with a sponge and apply the amount of concealer that I apply, which is not a ton. Um, and then in terms of not necessarily getting super creasy or drying me out, I really do think this Ulta one is absolutely gorgeous. In the number three spot, is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. So it's this gorgeous metal packaging and then inside you have this sort of bronzer slash contour shade. It's definitely more cool toned and then you have a very pretty soft um, traditional sort of goldish champagne highlighter. I will say even though this one has a hint of gold in it, it works beautifully for my skin tone. She does have a deeper version of this as well available at her counter if you are more tan to deep skin toned. Um, this formula is why I love this so much. This bronzer is absolutely gorgeous. I think it gives you of me especially being more cool toned i feel like it is the perfect sort of bronzery contoury type shade i will say this has a satiny texture to it it's not as satiny and glowy as her blushes but there's definitely a little bit of a sheen to this that also is just really really natural i don't feel like if you went in ham and really were trying to carve and chisel like a sharp line i don't feel like this would work because i tend to feel like you need more of a matte product to really truly contour because you're trying to cause uh, a bit of a shadow, things to recess on your face. And anytime you add anything that's super glowy, it's actually bringing it forward. So I don't necessarily think this is like the perfect contour type product, but if you're looking for somebody who's gonna kind of bronzer, which is what I've done today, kind of applied it um, as I would a contour, but more blown out and then around my face as a bronzer, this is gorgeous. Um, this is a color that builds up beautifully. I can use this and it's not too intense on me, but I have used this on people who are much, much tanner than myself um, when I was doing their makeup and it showed up and looked absolutely beautiful and bronze. So I definitely feel like this is a buildable product and is very versatile in terms of skin tones. So I, I think it's lovely. The highlighter shade is gorgeous. I think it is more of a subtle highlighter. Um, it's not that it's not going to show up, but it's definitely more on the natural end of things. I chose not to put this one on today because I had already put on um, this highlighter and I wanted you guys to be able to see just kind of this on its own. Um, but I have definitely layered this with this cream product as well or, or used it on its own and it's it's definitely beautiful. Also one that is very finely milled and doesn't draw any attention um, to I would say any wrinkles or texture on your skin. In terms of a drugstore dupe, this is very new to my collection, but it is almost spot on in terms of the color undertone and also in terms of the luminosity. And I'm still have this in my testing drawer, but the undertone and the um, sort of light luminosity was so freaking similar to the Charlotte Tilbury one that I had to bring it up even though I, 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 I haven't completed my full sort of testing week long that I like to do on a product. It's from Flower Beauty. So this is their Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer. I have the shade L1 Sunrise and it is so stinking similar to the Charlotte Tilbury. Like so freaking similar. And for people who have struggled with uh, bronzers being too, too warm tone for them, no matter what they do. I think a lot of people are going to be really, really thrilled. So if you are one of those people like myself who finds that bronzer, bronzers rather get really orange really fast, this undertone is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I will say it's super strange. When I use it with a brush, it kind of retains this texture, but when I rub my finger over the top of it, it actually starts to show a little bit of warmth as you can see peeking through but then if I take a brush and kind of dust it over it goes away I don't know what to make of that 
other than it's super strange. And I just noticed that while I was swatching today, but regardless, beautiful product. I think this is something that um, may work for a lot of different people. I'm curious on the other undertones because I know she did, I think three shades, maybe four shades of this bronzer. Um, so this may be one that I pick up a darker shade just to have for some upcoming um, wedding makeup that I'm doing for friends. So yeah, anyway, beautiful product. I've had this for years. This is the first thing I purchased from her as well. So bear that in mind as well. So I've traveled with this a ton. I've used this on a ton of people for um, makeup weddings that I, or makeup for weddings that I've done. Um, I have used the crap out of this and you can see like I'm losing the imprint a ton on this side, but I still have had this for years and years and years and years and it has continued to hold up and last. So fantastic product, really stupid excited about this though. Okay, in the number two spot. This is newer to my collection. I bought this in December, but this is the Hollywood Flawless Filter. You guys don't wanna hear how awesome this is. I'm sorry, it's awesome. It comes with a doe foot applicator, which may or may not be your favorite thing. I find that this product is a lot thinner. Um, and so having this doe foot applicator, you can very easily blend a thin layer strategically on your face and it makes it very easy to apply. It makes it super easy to blend out. And what I find is that as it relates to primers, a lot of the primers that are super glowy are also rather thick and creamy. Um, and so when I think about that, I'm thinking about like the Becca Backlight sp Priming Filter or the Spotlight Priming Filter from Physicians Formula um, or a Maybelline one that I've tried. So a lot of those have a real like creaminess and a little bit more moisture. It almost feels like you're putting a moisturizer on your skin. You can end up with a similar effect from those products, but it feels a lot thicker and a lot creamier on your skin. So what I think makes this product unique, and I'm one of the reasons I think people have gotten as crazy for it as they have, is that it's giving you a similar level of glow to something like this but is in a much thinner formula and I think it's a lot easier to work with. So if I were to use a product like this, what I would ultimately do is I would squirt a bunch of this out on the back of my hand. I would spread this out as thin as humanly possible and then I would use my beauty blender to pick some up and place it on. And I can get there with that effect, um, but it obviously is a lot more steps than just pulling this out and smearing it on the face. And I also have to be careful not to build up the glow too much because of that real creaminess and almost moisturizer type feel. The thinner formula in here is really what makes this product so magical. The other thing that I feel like this has is just a touch, like a smidgen of coverage to it. Um, it's definitely not going to, I mean, it's light, it's light coverage, but don't get me wrong, but this comes in seven different shades. And so it's got a full range of light to dark. And because it has just that smidgen of coverage to it, I find that this is a product that looks really beautiful on bare skin. On days where I don't want a ton of makeup, what I will frequently do is I will reach for my um, Glossier, what is it, the conceal, stretch concealer, and I will put some of that underneath my eyes to cancel out some redness, to cover up any blemishes I have, blot that out a little bit, and then put this on the high points of my cheek and honestly pretty close to underneath my eyes. What I find is that my skin just looks so healthy and glowy and it doesn't look like I'm wearing makeup, but I feel like I've gotten just a smidge of coverage from this. I Listen guys, there are ways to achieve a similar look at the drugstore. Um, the product I would probably think, that I think is probably the most similar, but it's a little more glowy than that, is actually the base of this. This is the Milani Contour and Highlight Stick. Um, it has a creamy, thin, highlighter with a wand down at the bottom. This is, I think, is the closest product I found at the drugstore. However, because I use so much of this product when I'm using it all over my face, um, and this was really, I think, designed more to just hit the high points of your cheek, I would blow through the bottom of this in like 2.2 seconds. So, so I'm not really sure it's a, that much of a savings considering how little of the product you get in here. But when I looked at all my skin illuminators, when I looked at all of my primers, and I was swatching things side by side, the texture as well as the level of glow and that just hint of coverage I get from here, it's beautiful. Now, could I apply some of those products and get a similar effect by the end of the day, layering over makeup over the top of it? Sure. Um, I think I probably could. 
but I will tell you guys, this is, this is something special. This is really beautiful. All right, we've come to my number one product. We have counted all the way down and I'm gonna tell you in advance, I don't have a drugstore dupe for you. I don't even have a cheaper high-end dupe for you. I do feel like this formula is really different than anything I've ever used. And that is what is my complexion base. So this is the Light Wonder Youth Boosting Perfect Skin Foundation. I did end up getting the shade uh, two as opposed to one. One was a little light on me, two is maybe a smidge too dark, but because it is a more lightweight foundation, I just ultimately felt after I sampled both of them that I liked how my skin looked with two versus one. There are only 10 shades of this, this is lightweight coverage, guys. So if you are looking for medium coverage, if you are looking for full coverage, hands hands down now. But um, I will say, I don't even think that this builds to a full medium. I do think you can maybe build it up to maybe a light medium, but it's a very light, light medium. But it makes your skin look gorgeous. It looks like skin, but it's like lit from within. It blends out like a dream. It just smooths everything out. It doesn't settle into any fine lines and wrinkles. I feel like this would be an absolutely lovely uh, foundation for somebody who has more mature skin. I just think it is stunning. I do think that this is probably going to be too moisturizing if you have oily skin. I think if you have normal skin like myself or more dry skin, um, this would be absolutely gorgeous, but it is a more hydrating, lightweight foundation. So it is one that I find that I want to set with a little bit of powder just to make sure it lasts on me all day. If you have dry skin, you may not need to do any sort of setting. It says it's an innovative technology that evens out imperfections and moisturizes your skin in a lightweight formula. It has SPF 15, youth boosting actives, reduce wrinkles, evens out complexion um, for baby soft skin. Definitely agree with that. And then it has pseudo ceramides. I'm not sure what that means, but hydrate your skin for up to 18 hours. So this is one in the winter time when my skin was just feeling a little dry or dull. This is the only thing I wanted to reach for. You can really blend this out with your fingers and just have a very easy makeup application. I tend to use a sponge just because I think I, I don't know, I just like sponges in terms of blending things out versus touching my face with my fingers um, for the most part. So I just, I, it's gorgeous guys. Like I absolutely love how this looks on my skin. I think my skin just looks fresh and healthy. Okay, so here are two fantastic skin moisturizing ingredients. They have both glycerin and squalane in there. So that is definitely something I feel like I sense in this product in terms of hydration, but it's hydration without being greasy. And so unless I'm missing something as I stare at this ingredient list, I don't think that there's any oils inside of here. Um, like I'm not seeing any sort of rosehip oil or mineral oil or anything like their coconut oil or anything like that inside of here. It really is using the squalane and the glycerin, I think as really nice hydrating humectic ingredients. I, it's gorgeous. So the last thing I wanted to call out is just that I actually think this is a really good value for money as well. So it is a $46 foundation, which is pricey. I'm not going to minimize that fact, but you are getting 1.4 fluid ounces in here. So you're getting significantly more than a standard ounce, which is what you find in most foundations. I did a quick like grab of some more popular high-end foundations from Dior and CoverFX and NARS and Giorgio Romani and YSL and Hourglass. And so on a price per ounce basis, so when I think about that in terms of foundations specifically, this one breaks down to be 32.86 an ounce, which puts it in line with a lot of other sort of, I would say medium high-end products from like Tarte and Too Faced, uh, things and it cosmetics. You're, you're sitting more in that range for this product than some of your other very expensive high-end foundations like Giorgio Armani and YSL. So I just wanted to call that out because I do think because this is a product that a lot of people only have maybe one or two in their collection and or go through a lot quicker, um, I do think this is a value for money when you calculate it on a price per ounce basis. If you tell me that eyeshadow pan is twice as large as my normal eyeshadows and so it's cheaper at a price per ounce perspective, I don't really care. I'm probably not gonna get through that eyeshadow. I will get through something like this. And so I do think a price per ounce is a valuable 
talking point as it relates to this foundation. But I often get lots of questions from you guys on sort of glowy skin and how do I get my skin looking so glowy. I've been wearing this a lot. Um, I'm gonna do a better job of putting all the things that I'm wearing down in the description box for my videos so that you can see those. But I will tell you, this is one that I've been reaching for a ton since I picked it up in December and I absolutely love it and I think it gives my skin so much beautiful glow. If you feel like you need more coverage, this probably isn't the product for you or you might wanna consider maybe mixing some of this product into a more fuller coverage foundation to bring in some of that glow, but give you a little bit more coverage. This might be a perfect one to drop in some um, custom enhancer drops from Cover FX or something that is mostly pigment into here if you feel like you need more coverage. But for me on an everyday basis, I feel like this light coverage is gorgeous. It makes my skin look super glowy and healthy still allows my skin to peek through and then I have absolutely no issue spot concealing the places on my skin where I do need more and that where this just isn't doing much at all to cover it up. So yeah, that is my number one Charlotte Tilbury product. Now I will say there's some obvious holes in my Charlotte Tilbury testing. I have not tried her other foundation, her magic foundation. I have also not tried her magic cream, which is her I guess she kind of calls it a primer. It's a priming moisturizer. It's what she uses on everyone's skin before she begins anything else. Um, there's also a primer in this um, category that I'd be curious to try out. Um, so it's the Light Wonder Primer. I'm curious to see what that is like. She also recently released a loose powder. I have not tried that. So I have my eye on a few other products from her because in general, my feeling for this brand is that, yes, it's a little bit more expensive, um, but the product quality is gorgeous. The packaging is gorgeous. And so I feel the investment in these products, both in terms for how I feel when I hold something that is gorgeous and beautiful in my hand, as well as the quality of the inside of this product. It's not just all fluff. It's not just a pretty package. It really does work well. So I've had really good success with this brand. So it makes me um, more curious to try even more things. So if there's a product that I didn't talk about today that you have been super curious about, by all means, let me know. I think the thing that's probably number one on my hit list is that uh, secondary foundation. I'm really curious to see how that wears in comparison to this and potentially blended together. Um, but let me know down in the comments if there are other Charlotte Tilbury products that I didn't talk about today that you are personally curious about, kind of building that like potential hit list at some point here in the future. All right, so that wraps us up, guys. That was my list counting down from 13 to one. I have a feeling when I go back and edit, this is going to be very long and lengthy because I added in that second layer about talking about drugstore options, um, if there were any for these products. Uh, so apologies if this is now a 60 minute video. <laughs> I will do my best to edit out uh, and cut this down as much as possible, but I definitely want you to have a full sense of all 13 of these products. And then also how the potential drugstore products I was recommending differed or were similar to these products. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Look forward to talking to you in the comment section.